And you, Mr. Stirna, our permanent fixture for so many years, who is now in a PhD program, had to clone himself, and that is his clone. But a prettier one, you know, and a smarter one. Yes, as far as practical things are I concerned. I don't know how to unlock the computer. Well, that's, that's <laughs> Mr. Stirna's bailiwick. He runs uh, technological projects here. In any event, he wanted to hear about kleptocracy and oligarchy, active measures in the Russians, post-communist liberals, etc. She's the person to go to because she does case studies. And her new case study will be on azote, a strategic industry, fertilizer, among other things, as you'll discover, that uh, a Russian oligarch connected to Vladimir Putin took sudden interest in. Why? So maybe I will just say at the very beginning that I'm very happy to speak after Mr. Termond because in view of what he said about uh, how... <laughs> no, no. Uh, the, the point is that the moment you have heard what M Mr. Termond said about the Polish reality, maybe you will be uh, more likely to believe what I am going to show you. Uh, I will not. I will try to not be very controversial because I'm going to focus on some mechanisms that I spotted, and the case I am going to discuss is the case of uh, the attempt at hostile takeover of uh, Azote Group, which is a big ni nitrogen processing plant in Poland. And um, because there are a few aspects of it that. Um, were very interesting, I decided to dig a little deeper and uh, I read loads of press articles about the subject. I was forced to uh, learn a little bit about the stock market, so it was very interesting research. Uh, and the whole point of it is that in Poland you have multiple influences that change not only our political life, they also change our economic life. And because there is a lot to gain due to the fact that Poland uh, has emerged from communism and the ownership and the conditions on which many state, previously state-owned uh, state -owned businesses function are still unclear, there is a big field for influence. Uh, so I hope that you will find uh, this presentation enjoyable. Let's keep our fingers crossed, precisely. So, uh, as you see, this is Azote Group in all its glory. So, I really admire the photo. <laughs> and this is a good introduction. So, first and foremost, uh, we are dealing here with the area of intermarium. So, after the end of communism, or let's say political transformation, this proved to be a very simmering area of Europe. There were military conflicts. We still have military conflicts. Some of them are beginning. Some of them are frozen. Uh, the countries that are there, and especially Poland, have very long democratic tradition. But at, at the same time, uh, they are relatively young democracies in the 20th century meaning of this term. So this results in a situation of liquidity and certain chaos, which is reflected also by the economy. And this is a reason why at, at the conference, which was predominantly p political and historical, I decided to talk about economy, because this is all connected. And my, the title of my presentation is Azote Group and Information War. And uh, in common belief, information war is newspapers and television. We imagine information war as a sudden activity on the internet or maybe on television or on the radio that, and in the newspapers that uh, forces the people to think in a certain way, that channels people's thinking into, into certain tracks and doesn't allow them to judge the situation uh, from some other point of view. However, information war is much more. In, in fact, the 
one of the biggest authorities of the information war, Sun Tzu, who used to live many hundreds of years ago, he, he, thousands, <laughs> as I am being corrected, uh, he saw it as an attempt at total sabotage, meaning you are supposed to influence your enemy to, su to such an extent that actually the moment you enter his country, he doesn't want to protect himself anymore. He is so demobilized and all the structure of his state are in such a corrupt condition that he is not really willing to fight because everything is disintegrated. So this can be done on the level, on various levels. And I wanted to show how it was happening in this one simple case of hostile takeover. Uh, so, first of all, why Grupa Azote was an interesting target? Grupa Azote is a nitrogen processing, initially it was a nitrogen processing plant that uh, was begun uh, already in the times of the communism. However, it has a very interesting investment portfolio because they have projects related not only to nitrogen processing, which is mostly fertilizers, but also to other chemical projects, as well as scientific projects. They are very forward-looking and they formed a scientific center in which all the discoveries that are, that are being made on the way when they are working with different chemical substances uh, sub substances are being analyzed and possibly pre prepared for further use of the company. So they have very modern outlook on their business. So they are far away from the simple fertilizer production, so to say. Uh, what is more, they also possess a number of um, real estate uh, units that would allow them for uh, the distribution of gas, including a uh, small port uh, terminal, and what is more, they can also switch uh, to operations with shale gas. So for a company who is trying to establish itself in the European Union, they are a very interesting piece of commodity. So what is a hostile takeover for everybody who is not very familiar with the stock exchange, just like I wasn't a couple of months ago, hostile takeover is a situation when a company tries to buy another company against the will of the board, uh, of the board management of the company uh, that is the target. Uh, so in case of uh, Gazprom, uh, excuse me, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I mixed, uh, I mixed it up. So uh, the company that wanted to, uh, host, uh, to take over Azote in a hostile way uh, is Akron Group. And Akron Group is a Russian giant who was formed uh, in the USSR. It's a, it is a global leader in the production of fertilizers. It owns its own uh, uh, mines of phosphates that are necessary uh, to produce fertilizers, and he is a global player. However, when you look at the map, the production takes place outside of the European Union. It's here in China and in, in the territory outside of the European Union and as a result they are still obliged to pay when they are selling products to the countries which are inside the Union which of course is a source of major uh, financial losses and for them uh, to have an asset inside the European Union that could be partly uh, burdened with production would be a, would be a gain not to mention the fact that if um, they bought Azote, they would eliminate the risk of them starting to deal with the processing of shale gas, which is a big option for uh, the Polish business in the coming years. Uh, one more reason they are so focused on Azote is, is the fact that Azote possess uh, very precious uh, patents 
that can still be developed and that can also become sources of uh, major financial growth for the company. So obviously, uh, for Akron, the purchase of Azote would be, it, it is a fight for domination because they are gaining an uh, outpost inside of the European Union that has a potential which is, limit, which is not limited only to nitrogen processing. It has much more potential, uh, especially that it is a domineering uh, in our region. Of course, it, it cannot be compared to Akron, which is a global player, but still it is a considerable economic asset for Poland. So here I decided to paint the targets for you. And of course, the major one was the group itself. But the other targets of the information war were the decision makers in Poland and public opinion. So I decided to focus on main actors and in institutions, dividing them into three fronts, political front, media front, and economic front. As far as the political front is concerned, apart from the contacts inside Poland that were mobilized to uh, be intermediaries in this whole process, uh, some of the most important um, officials of the European Union were also targeted. One of the Polish lobbyists uh, was responsible for creating contacts between the owner of the Akron Group and um, the president of the European Commission at that point. So this was happening in 2011. In 2012, um, the lobbyist, a former Polish president, who is friends with the owner of the Akron Group, approached uh, Polish, min uh, Polish prime minister at that time, and as well as the president of uh, the Ch Chancellery's Economic Council, which is the economic council that advises the prime minister. So they were approached with an Akron portfolio, which presented Akron as a perfect and uh, good company to be investing on the Polish market, which of course is a source of questions because if you have such a global player trying to buy anything on your market, your first question should be, what is it going to mean for me in the long run? And in the long run, of course, it means the loss of business for us, for the Poles. Uh, however, the lobbyist was not the only person who was involved. Uh, the Under Secretary of State in the Ministry of Treasury at that time happened to be a personal connection of the owner of the group. And uh, he was his contact in the Ministry of Treasury. Uh, another Polish institution that was involved was the Office of Competition and Consumer Protection, which is the office responsible for giving the decisions regarding the mergers of the companies. So whenever we have a merger of companies in Poland, this, um, this office decides if, if the merger can be done, if it's, uh, if it's good and according to the regulations that the office knows, legal. Uh, so this was one uh, way of influencing um, the Polish um, the decision on the political front, and when it went through the private connections. The other, the other source of pressure was political meetings, because uh, a meeting took place between the delegation of the Polish parliament and uh, the delegation of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Federation's Council, which is a body of the Russian parliament. And at that, pre uh, at that meeting, uh, the owner of the Akron Group was present. So this is uh, like an example of uh, probably this sort of political influence which wouldn't be possible in America. This, I suppose that here it, it couldn't happen. Uh, so the other front I wanted to discuss was the media front. 
and uh, for the last couple of years, uh, especially in Poland, we, we witnessed modification of activities of uh, the newspapers and internet portals that are that, that belong to the Russians. And we have a portal which is called Sputnik News. It's uh, available in many countries and it presents uh, the point of view that can be more or less associated with the Russian state interest. So uh, the Polish public opinion was being influenced uh, through the media that traditionally were associated with the former communist press uh, via Sputnik and as well, uh, as well as through other media who are just taking information from those sources. Another interesting thing was that RIA Novosti accredited correspondent happened to be a personal friend of the president of the Akron, uh, of the owner of the Akron Group. And uh, in 2013, uh, a trip was organized, which was described by another Polish newspaper uh, as a trip for Cantor's rubles. And this was a trip to, whose main aim was to visit the uh, phosphate mines that um, are owned by the Akron Group by a group of Polish journalists. And naturally, after this trip, they all wrote some newspaper article about various topics related to Akron Group. So it was not that they were pushing it down the uh, reader's throat. Akron is good, you should allow for the sales of our assets to Akron. No, it was an information here, information there, so that the topic can start to exist in the Polish mind. So uh, as far as the economic front is concerned, which is the very sale of the company, and this process is still ongoing. We don't know if this hostile takeover is going to take place or not. Uh, but for sure, we can differentiate three phases in it. And the first one, uh, I would name it a direct purchase attempt when the company officially approached uh, Azote trying to buy it. Uh, the second one was uh, acting behind the scenes where the, when they were buying uh, Azote's shares unofficially. And the third is legal manipulations, which is the phase I believe is still ongoing. So the direct purchase attempt was interesting because uh, the friend of the owner of the Akron Group, who happened to be the Under Secretary of State in the Ministry of Treasury, was consulted on the topic, and it was he who advised on the mechanism that was used to try to buy the shares of, at that point, Zakłady Azotowe Tarnów Mościska. So uh, they called for public tender, and the Akron said, in public, we are buying shares, we offer this and this, we want to buy 66%. So this was immediately identified and this was being done uh, through a, a company which is owned by Akron, through Norica Holding. <coughs> so Norica Holding said, we want to have a merger with Zakłady Azotowe Tarnów Mościska and we are calling you to sell us shares. Uh, so this was immediately identified by the Minister of uh, Treasury, uh, Minister Budzanowski, as um, the attempt at hostile takeover. So it, it's a very interesting situation that you actually have under secretary in the Ministry of uh, Treasury who advises on how to buy the shares of the company and his supervisor it identifies this as a hostile takeover. So this shows you how many different agendas can exist in, a, in one Polish ministry. Uh, so um, the ministry came up with, uh, came up with a project of the creation of Azoti Group, which would be the, which was called the consolidation of the Polish chemical industry, and they decided to create the the group. So instead of a merger between Norica and uh, and Zakłady Azotowe, it would be uh, a new group would be created, 
And it seemed an, a perfect way uh, to avoid the hostile takeover. However, one obstacle on the road to success was the Office of Competition and Consumer Protection that was procrastinating the decision about the merger of the Polish companies, but in the meantime gave a positive decision about the merger of uh, Norica and Azoty. So uh, how come that even though the Minister of Treasury says this is an attempt at hostile takeover, and the office which is there to safeguard the conditions that are uh, regulating the functioning of the Polish market totally ignores this. And they just give the positive decision to the, to the party which is competing against the Polish industry, basically. So ultimately, as a result of political pressure, Grupa Azoty was created and Akron did not manage to buy 66% of Zakłady Azotowe. He only ma managed to amass, um, they only managed to amass about 13% of shares of the new group, which was called Azot Azoty Group. So th the other process, the next phase of the process was taking place in the years 2013 to 2014. And uh, this was mostly happening behind the scenes because officially, uh, officially, as um, Akron Group failed to buy Azota Group, and they were keeping the low profile. However, uh, they were trying to buy shares undercover. So um, the Azota Group was created at the end of 2012. And from 2013, a lot, of pre a lot of pressure was involved. So in February 2013, uh, the Polish parliament delegation went to Moscow. This was the, the moment I mentioned already in the field of political pressure. And the main two topics at that meeting, even though there was a whole agenda of points that were in interesting for the Polish delegation, the only two points discussed at this meeting, according to the words of people who were present at the meeting, was uh, the agreement to the purchase of Azoto Group by Akron and um, making the minister who was responsible for the uh, remedy action redundant. So. The delegation of the Polish parliament went to Moscow in February 2013 and in 2013, in April, the minister in question was made redundant. Uh, of course, there was uh, some reason for it which was um, justifiable, but we will never know if this was only that or if this was somehow related to the political pressure of the other country. Um, another person that was made redundant at the same time was the chief of internal security agency who was advising against uh, Akron in that case in 2012, saying openly to the public and to the prime minister that this is an attempt at a hostile takeover. And from the point of view of our uh, state interest, it wouldn't be advisable. Uh, so this was this happened in April. Another thing that happened in April was the fact that Ministry of Treasury decided to sell a stake of 12.13% of Grupa Azote shares. This means they entered the market. This means they could start to be bought by Akron. Of course, uh, the Ministry preserved the right to uh, first purchase of those shares should they decide in the future to repurchase the shares but if somebody buys them in the meantime the right for repair the right to the first repurchase doesn't really change anything and so uh, in June 2013 the role the advisory role of the under secretary of state in the in the uh, treasury ministry was revealed by the owner of the Akron Group himself, who said openly on Polish TV 
that actually this person was advising him on the price of shares and on the mechanism to choose uh, in the public tender for Zakłady um, Azotowe shares. Uh, another stage of that whole affair was um, in June 2014 when uh, Akron, to everybody's surprise, announced that they own 20% of Grupo Azoto shares. So initially they owned 13% and then suddenly they began to own 20%. How did it happen? Of course, it, it uh, happened um, undercover. They were, they were buying shares through um, investment funds. And as a result, when they have 20%, they can already try to start to have their own representative on the board of Grupa Azote. So even though they have no uh, decisive influence, they still can ha participate in the board meetings if they wish to, because so far they haven't made this step yet. And as a result, they have influence on the decisions and they know the future uh, plans of the company. So this is, this is a major drawback for Azote Group as a result. Uh, interestingly enough, the person who was advising on how to uh, buy Azote to Akron in 2012, in 2014, in July, became the new CEO of the Warsaw Stock Exchange. Legal manipulations, 2015, and this, this was the most, uh, probably the most painstaking part of my research because I went to a lot of trouble to read all the interpolations of Polish MPs regarding uh, the future of Azoty Group that were directed to our ministries. And the reply from the ministries is always the same. We have 33% of shares in Azotic Group, which is enough to uh, um, have the control over the group. Um, the ministry also has something which is called the golden share, which is a special type of right uh, for one of the shareholders of the company to take decisions inside the company uh, and in fact, it limits the decision rights of all the other stock uh, owners. However, this mechanism can be questioned in view of the European Union law. And in case of major um, hostile takeovers, which happened in other countries, this was precisely what was questioned in front of the European Union courts and which actually uh, was decided against the um, against the the possessors of the golden stake. So the the problem with what our Ministry of Treasury has is that in the view of Polish law, it's fine. But if Akron decides to take Azote to court about that, and it goes to the European Union court where, as we know, uh, they already have friends, it can be a uh, worst case. So, technically speaking, our Ministry of Treasury should try to amass more shares. They shouldn't have only the 33%, they should go for the safe 51% ownership. However, in all those interpolations, this was like a standard reply. There was, there was, I couldn't see any sign of improvement. It was like, okay, again, there is this MP's interpolation about Tarnov. Oh, let's send him back the same kind of paper. And um, this becomes to be a burning issue because one of the countermeasures that was taken by the Polish ministry uh, of Treasury to protect Azote Group was to um, include it on the list of companies of strategic uh, meaning for the Polish economy. However, this list is only an addendum to some document 
and this document expires at the end of this year. So as of the 1st of January 2016, the protected status of Azotic Group stops to exist. And uh, what is also interesting, in October 2015, uh, there was an interpolation of, the, um, of an MP from that region uh, who was uh, um, addressing the problem of the changes in the statute of Grupa Azoty, which made it more difficult for the members of the crew to have their own representative in the board of the company because according to the new rules, the person who is supposed to be on the board, uh, on the management board, not only has to have uh, higher education, they also have to have um, specific kind of MBA to be able to sit on the board, which automatically excludes all the people who by virtue of very long experience with this company can have comparable or better knowledge. And this interpolation, at the moment I was doing my research, was not responded to. So uh, as, as I already, uh, as I have already shown in my presentation, the reactions of our um, governing bodies were inconsistent. Uh, as you could see, there were people who were advising Akron in the same ministry that was trying to protect Azotiv from being bought by Akron. We had the office that was giving the decisions accepting mergers of Polish companies and of Polish and Russian companies. It, it seems totally random. So uh, to me this shows that there is no um, consciousness that there, the businesses of strategic importance are linked to many fields. And this uh, is not coordinated betwe be uh, between various ministries. And it, I cannot stipulate here if this is intentional or unintentional, because I don't have any grounds to say, oh, this was intentional. I, I can only see what was happening and how people were connected to one another. But I strongly believe that something like state interest exists and that we should, especially in the young states, in all those states in the post-Soviet zone, we should be very careful to whom we sell our companies and uh, what it means for us in the long run. So this is a cosmic view of uh, Grupa Azoty. And I do believe that this is the question of who loses the battle and who wins the war. Because I believe that some investments that seem very profitable might in the long run lead to, to the death of industry in Poland. Because if, if some field of economy is given into the hands of the global player, what are we going to be left with? So what, what we need in Poland is the policy that is looking forward 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, some sort of strategic w vision that will allow us not only to win the battles, but also win the wars. And what is very important here is what was also pointed out by Mr. Turnbund in his presentation that in all those countries in the intermarium zone, the influence of the past is very tangible. And it is also a mental influence because what is inconceivable in America happens in our region. And it's, it doesn't make it more fair in our region. It only makes it more palpable because people were dealing with it before. And uh, the way to build a democracy is also to ensure that we have high business standards and that those standards are observed not only by the owners of the companies and the management board of the companies, but also by the members of the ministries. First of all, because the ministry is there to uh, guide our industries and to protect them and not to sell them off for nothing, or maybe even for a lot of money, but the price is our future, in fact. All right, so I already summed it up. I believe that 
this is an ongoing mission, an ongoing operation. I sincerely hope that uh, the new government that uh, has just uh, been elected in Poland is going to be more focused on the strategic concept of economy instead of the prices of shares and temporal gains. Thank you. Oh, that's okay. I have a question. Jump, jump right in. Jump, uh -huh. jump. Well, we're watching you. How do you like our work? Oh, well, I think it's Thank you for well, supporting it. We will people. keep tabs on things and we'll keep inviting people who specialize in current affairs like Ma Termont. They pay attention to it. I'm a historian, so I dig in other things that are controversial. But Maria is interested in things as they develop other people too so we'll continue doing it and basically we'll keep digging on oh, the floor is yours so, what about february yeah um two quick questions um, at the end of march 2011 the polish government <coughs> was going to embark on a nuclear power program was azote one of the companies involved in that nuclear power uh, I was not focusing on that aspect. I was focusing uh, on nitrogen processing. So even if it if it was, I was not studying this issue. So I don't know the answer to this question. And a, a, a question about the February 2013 parliamentary delegation that went to Moscow. Uh, was that a delegation that was composed of uh, a fair representation of all parties sitting in the Senate? Uh, I believe so. I, I believe I believe so because a number of Polish politicians uh, were present so and um, the reason uh, the source from which I know that the main issue that was discussed was Azote group and made and the um, firing of the Minister of Treasury was because one of the members of that delegation shared it with a newspaper. None of of my information come from a secret source. All I know, I read it in the newspapers, which only shows that if you read newspapers, you can uh, you can have information. The problem is that you really have to read a lot. <laughs> yes. I suppose that the right question to it is not yet. But uh, th this is why this company is so interesting, be because it has a lot of potential. So uh, we should be very careful to the marketing spin on things that are happening, because it's easy to say that a global company dealing with uh, fertilizers has bought a Polish company producing fertilizers. And it doesn't seem controversial to anyone. What we have to look at is the potential of Azote Group. And I believe it's not only fertilizer production. And certainly they are not going to focus exclusively on that because their por portfolio entails chemical projects, scientific projects, uh, fertilizers, but also potentially shale gas. So I think that they can develop in many directions. Can the Polish government uh, put its uh, hand down on the deal and say this is a you know, vital strategic interest and uh, reverse some of these uh, decisions that, that were made in the last couple of years? Well, th this is this is the point. I was browsing through all the interpolations of the MPs because um, you have parliamentaries who are interested in the future of Azote, especially that it is a major uh, job provider in its region. So they were there were many questions regarding the situation of Azote in the view of hostile takeover and all they were getting as a response from the ministry was that we own 33% of shares so the situation is safe whereas it it certainly is not safe since some of the rights 
related to those 33% can be questioned in the view of the European law, which due to the fact that we are a, um, a European Union member is superior to the Polish law in certain fields. Any other question? Oh, I think we're done. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more fun and games. You'll find an invitation to our next event. It's going to be a, an Intermarium pre-Christmas. Uh, Shalker will uh, talk about Minister Macierewicz and the allegations that he loves the Protocols of the Elders of Zion which is yet another canard of Gazeta Wyborcza. Thank you.